Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Alliance Group Podcast, and we have a very special guest, as always, today, Mr. Matt Johnson uh, with Five Rings Financial, also the founder of the Social Security Education Center, a nonprofit uh, that helps uh, seniors and people that are approaching that that age uh, strategize around Social Security, right, Matt? Yep, that's correct. Thanks so much yeah. for being here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just oh. flew in, just landed, uh, flew it. Flew out here to Atlanta from Denver. From Denver, yeah. This morning, we had some quick lunch and jumped into the podcast. We're going to be shooting a lot of content today that's going to help you um, with this Social Security Education Center um, that you are uh, running. By the way, congratulations on that. It's it's it, it's it's a very cool program. Oh well, thank you, uh, Mark and Jason. You guys have been a tremendous help with getting the website and everything set up. Mark so, Powell yeah. and Jason Norton. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. So it's uh, it, it's been really great, kind of working with you, getting to know your business. So, first question that I have to ask, Matt, a lot of folks might be wondering. So, you started out in your career. I think you wanted to work with with the FBI, right? <laughs> I, I did, yeah, <laughs> right? I did, yeah. So you uh, you got your master's? Yeah, master's. I got my master's in accounting. In accounting, got my CPA. Yeah. Right. And uh, that was the that was the plan, but then it all changed. Yeah, but then it all <laughs> changed, right? So uh, it, it's funny how, how life kind of works and how yeah. our careers go like this and like this. You find yourself now uh, founding this nonprofit, uh, Social Security Education Center, uh, and working with w- w- with seniors, people in their fifties and sixties that are looking for the best ways to strategize about Social Security. Which, I, as I've been talking to you. Yeah. Uh, it's an incredibly complex system. <laughs> There's a little more to it than you think. At There's first, a yeah. lot more to it <laughs> than I would have thought. Yeah. Uh, I think the way that you told me there were how many co- different combinations of ways that you could potentially access Social Security if you're married? 9,000, according to the Social Security website. There's 9,000 potential <laughs> com- So I wonder why... <laughs> Uh, the average American who's nearing retirement age uh, is in need of some guidance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's and and very few advisors, very few CPAs like know much about it at all because it's such a complex system. It's yeah. it, it, it's a very niche thing, right? Yeah. It's like either you're going to know how to answer all those questions, or you're going to be like you need to talk yeah. to somebody else about. Well, that. most people just default to, "Hey, I'd like to retire now. I'll turn on Social Security." Right. Yeah. Which is not a good approach, right? I, I'm always, what I tell people is I'm a big fan of just educating yourself. Know the pros and cons of, of your different options available to you. Right. Uh, so that, you know, you're more confident in your decision. Right. Because there are definitely, I mean, the average single retiree will leave 150 grand on the table. The average married, uh, it's like 202 or $250,000 on, ta- on the table for making a suboptimal choice. And it's not always about the numbers, the numbers obviously. Right. Uh, there are so many variables that go into it, but just understanding what you're leaving on the table if you are making that decision, right? Right, and maybe if you just think, "Oh, I just want to retire now because I feel like I'm I, I'm I'm ready." If maybe if you knew that if you waited three more years, you could increase your Social yeah. Security income by X amount, right? That would help inform that decision. Right? Yeah, yeah. So sure. let's actually start here, uh, Matt. <laughs> Explain to me and. To our viewers who might be watching, yeah, like like we're a five year old, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the background of Social Security, uh-huh. how this program came about, um, and where it stands today, and why it is so important to 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 have a a strategy and, and to be educated about this system as you go into starting to access it. Yeah, so started in the thirties. Um, as a way to help seniors come out of the Great Depression. I did not realize that. I actually learned that from you five yeah. minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and it's always been funded by two things. So, uh, well, m- most of Social Security has been funded by one thing. So your payroll taxes, mm-hmm. that number that comes out of your check, 6.2%, yep. uh, that goes and pays Social Security. Well, from the 30s until about 2010, that was sufficient. Okay, so we would pay the Social Security benefits needed with that Social Security tax revenue. That we were collecting. Yeah, and any excess would go into the Social Security Trust Fund, and they would buy treasuries and, and whatnot and grow that. But <clears throat> starting in 2010, with the baby boomers, uh, we were no longer able to pay out Social Security with just the payroll taxes. So we had so to start- So now we're having to dip into that fund. Th- yep, exactly. So right now in 2024, uh, we're at 2.8 trillion left in that Social Security Trust Fund, um, and and they anticipate the trust fund running out in 2034. 
So in 10 years. Mm. So that's, so you asked, why is it important to get educated about this? Um, I think, uh, you know, cause there, <clears throat> there are just so many options available to you and just having an idea and, and, and a general knowledge of the, the right. options will help you in, in making the decision. Well, it's interesting as we're, as we're talking about that, because now I'm thinking like, wow, if we've already started to dip into this as we entered the baby boomers retiring now, I mean, even more and more people mm. are retiring every day. Baby boomers are obviously a, a huge demographic yeah. uh, in, in this country. So it's really interesting to kind of think about uh, Social Security, where we are now, where we might be uh, 20 years from now. You and I are right around, how old are you? 34. 34, okay. Yeah. Well, I was doing myself a, a, a service there. <laughs> you look uh, 34. 41, 41. Uh, we're pretty much the same age, yeah, right? right? exactly. Uh, <laughs> so uh, a, a lot of folks are wondering, uh, your age, my age, yeah. right? Uh, is it going to be around when we are near retirement age, but if I feel like I've, I, people have been saying that for like 20, 30 years yeah. now, right? And yeah. I, here we are. We're still paying our social security taxes. People are still drawing right, from it. Right. Yeah. I have people in my office all the time who say, you know, we hear, we hear about the, all this is when social security going to run out. Right. And they tell me, you know, they're in their sixties. We were having this conversation when we were your age, they're yeah. actually having that conversation when they made a bunch of changes in 1983. And that's why they implemented those changes. Right. Um, but <clears throat> actually when I do my seminars, the first thing I, I, call it uh, the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Let's just address the elephant in the room. Is social security <laughs> going to be here, right? <laughs> and uh, I walk them through, there's this chart that's released by the OASDI and every year they release a report of where we are. Um, and that's that's who projects that we'll run out of that trust fund by 2033, start to have to only- If we don't make any changes. If we don't make any changes, exactly. Right, which we will. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 so that's what I tell everybody. There, there's no such thing as certainty, only probabilities. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's a political issue. There are certainly changes that can and will be made once we have to, right? Because right? right. one third of Americans rely entirely on Social Security. You can't just jerk that. Yeah, out from there's under, no, right? there's no way. Right, yeah. it would it would throw the country into yeah. into turmoil. Right, yeah. so we have already done things like those those changes that, that you just mentioned, where uh, we increased the minimum retirement age, or so the full retirement, the full age. Re yep. retirement age from sixty five to sixty seven. Yeah, so nineteen eighty three, um, <clears throat> they're you know they're having these same conversations and and basically number one they made it taxable. So this is under Reagan under Alan Greenspan. They made it taxable, but then they also increased the, the full retirement age from 65, and then they phased in 66, and they phased in 67. Mm -hmm. So now for anybody who's was born in 1960 or later, your full retirement age is 67, whereas when it started, Social Security, your full retirement age was 65. Right. Wow. So, and 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 th th these are the kind of changes that they could make again as we yeah. as we start to see maybe that that fund uh, start to empty out a little bit. You can make changes like this. You, you can do all sorts of things, right? Uh, you, you were talking about some other options, not only maybe uh, in increasing the full retirement age, uh, but also possibly uh, raising the cap, yeah. right? On 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 income that you pay, taxes that you pay on certain amounts of income. It's one hundred sixty five thousand. 168,600. Yeah. Cause when you look at it, the 2034 problem, <clears throat> yes, we will likely increase that full retirement age. That's kind of an easy, easy solution. Mm -hmm. Um, and usually they make those solutions for the younger, the younger uh, generations that aren't even thinking about social security. Right. Not many of people, my age, my buddies are having <laughs> hey, these conversations. <laughs> what about my social security <laughs> exactly. in 35 years? <laughs> so, um, so likely that will happen, but that's not going to make a big dent. If you, if you look they actually, if you only did that, it would like save us for another year. Right. So what's going to have to happen um, is increasing the taxes in some way. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> one way is to increase it from 6.2. They've talked about making it 7.8. So that would solve a big part of the issue. Mm -hmm. um, that's on your FICA, your payroll tax that right. you pay into. Uh, the percentage the, you get taxed. Right? Yeah. The other is a lot of people don't realize. So <clears throat> your Social Security taxes, you only pay that on the first 168600 So that's your cap. Mm -hmm. Above that, you pay Medicare taxes, but you don't pay any Social Security. So if they got rid of that cap, that would solve well over half of the issue right, right there. So so there are ways to do it. They might be yeah. painful to some folks. Um, sure. But uh, one thing that if, if I were a betting man, 
uh, that I don't think is going to happen is that Social Security is just going to stop. Yeah, there's and no way. They're, oh, they're sorry, just we're out of default. money. No more. Right, no more. Ever, you guys are going to have to deal with it yourselves. Um, At the end of the day, they'll create more IOUs before they do that. Right, which yeah. we know the government uh, yeah. is. Uh, They've done it before. They're they're <laughs> they're comfortable with it. Let's just say that. Um, all right, so let's get to this uh, this amazing uh, nonprofit that you set up and these courses that yeah. you teach. So you're you're literally doing some of these courses at like public libraries, yeah. right? And you're you're inviting people uh, to come and learn more about their social security strategy um, in these classes. Why don't you give us kind of an overview of the kind of information that you're going over with the people who, who choose to attend these? Yeah, so I <clears throat> I generally, I start out by addressing that elephant in the room. Yep. Um, that gets, <laughs> yeah, it makes everybody relax a little bit. Because right. the point is, hey, if it's going to be here, we might as well strategize, come up with a strategy of how are we going to maximize it. Right. So, that's what the course is called Social Security 101, and that's what it's dedicated to is, hey, what are the strategies available to you, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you know what are the pros and cons of each? So that's what we talk through um, for, for, yeah, most of the presentation. I also, um, I, I am a CPA, even though I don't do taxes, so I do talk about taxes a fair amount throughout the presentation, which always spices things up. You yeah. know? It gets oh, yeah. it exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves a CPA talking about oh, taxes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it brings down the house every time. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to talk about that as well because it's not just Social Security mm-hmm. strategy that you can help these attendees with. You also uh, are able to talk to them knowledgeably and maybe help them with their tax strategy right. around retirement or with even uh, making sure that they're saving enough for retirement that Social Security uh, will 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 kind of serve to support what they might already have. So yeah. you can talk, you, you can have those conversations as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times we're viewing Social Security because a lot, a lot of people didn't plan on having Social Security, mm. but it makes even, you know, one third of Americans rely entirely on it. But even if you have assets, it makes up a huge part of your plan. Right. Um, because either you're not having to dip into your plan, mm-hmm. uh, into your portfolio, or you're able to make some, to delay social security, live off of your portfolio if you retire early and make some strategic tra- uh, tax moves that can really help you out over the long run. Right. So there's a lot of cool options available and it's, isn't, there's no one answer, one size fits all. It's very individualized and, yes. and per, per uh, family, per, per retiring couple. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's what we talk about. One, one big thing is a lot of people want to, um, yeah, I had a lady come to me and she said, Hey, I, I just, she was, she was terrified. She had just lost a lot of money in the market. Mm-hmm. She had wanted to know, Hey, this is my social security that I'm turning on. Cause she had just gotten laid off. I'm going to turn on my social security next month. It was like 2,700, but I need four grand. What, what can we do? So a lot of it is income planning of how can we get you to a minimum mm-hmm. uh, dignity number that creates a financial floor for you. Right. Um, and so a lot of, uh, there's a lot of planning around income with right. social security. What are some of the um, of the biggest questions that you get uh, as far as the, the, the most common questions that you end up answering over and over and over? Will Social Security run out is the, is the, is the <laughs> that biggest. That is the biggest one. We have answered that very thoroughly. <laughs> and I actually right, feel right. much better about that's it now. Right. Um, uh, uh, common questions. Everybody wants to know, do I take it now or do I take it later? Right. Mm-hmm. Delaying versus early. Um, one thing that actually a lot of people don't realize um, is that, you know, you can collect. So if, if I'm married, I can collect my benefit and my spouse can get as well, in addition, a spousal benefit. Or if she has a high enough record, she can work, she can collect off of her own record. Mm-hmm. But we can collect both of those. A lot of people don't realize that whenever uh, you pass away, your spouse the, the lower amount drops off and your spouse takes over wherever the higher one was. So that's another uh, big thing that people don't really realize. Huh. Gotcha. And you actually had a story you were sharing about a lady who came in and you were able to uncover, uh, I think he said a hundred thousand yeah, dollars yeah. of, of money that she was owed in back pay just because yeah. she didn't realize that she could collect on. It was a, it was a, an ex-husband. Yeah. So the cool, the, so here's the coolest social security strategy. All you right. ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> we're you ready. We're, we're all waiting. <laughs> oh, nothing gets me more excited than <laughs> talking about social security strategies. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> if they've done a lot of, they've done away with a lot of social security strategies that you used to be able to do where you have the most options is if you're a surviving spouse. So this lady came to me and she was 67. She thought that 
she would have, she was going to plan on working till 70. And then she's like, oh, I'll just take social security at that point when I stop working. Well, she didn't mm-hmm. realize that now that she's full retirement age, it was 66 and six months. Now that she's full retirement age, she could, st- she could start collecting and work. Okay. But the, the bigger thing, and the reason why we did that was she had an ex husband who she got divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, they were married 10 years uh, and then he passed away. So she had a deceased ex husband. What we were able to do is get, is start his benefit basically and continue to grow hers until 70. So you can, so he had t- not remarried or w- was, is that even a factor? doesn't matter. She, she was not married wow. prior to 60. That's, that's the cutoff. If uh-huh. you, re- if you remarry prior to 60, no, no dice. If you remarry after 60, you can still collect the survivor benefit. So there are all these weird little rules. See, this is the kind of strategy that people need to know. <laughs> like right. someone's proposing to you at 59 That's and a half. Right. Like, hold on a second. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is my favorite story because she came to my class. She came to my office. Not only did she find out she could start collecting Social Security, but she could start collecting off of her deceased ex-husband while she continued to grow hers and get those 8% bumps until she delayed till 70 and then switched to her own at age 70. That whole decision process that, that got her like 13 grand of back pay from social security wow. and it, and it netted about a hundred grand over the course of the next three years. And the biggest thing there, and the incredible. reason I love doing these, um, cause obviously, you know, I, I get clients out of it, but I also get a lot of fulfillment just out of helping people that will never be clients. This lady had $30,000 to her name going into retirement in three years. So that hundred thousand dollars meant everything to her. Yeah, absolutely. See, that's uh, it's, it's incredible. Like just a little uh, understanding about the system works and and those little intricacies, right? The, what you get married before six, remarried before 60. Yes. Remarried after 60. No, or maybe it's the opposite way around. Oh, I've had some mad couples in my class. No, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, that's, that's incredible. A hundred thousand dollars difference. Mm-hmm. Um, what is a social security strategy that nobody knows about? That would be one is I say in, in what I have a lot of people who come to my class, they think of a friend that's a survivor because most people who are survivors don't realize that they can do both. So usually if you start social security, you're locked in. Mm -hmm. You, you, you say, I'm going to file for social security and I can no longer grow another benefit. Whereas if you're a survivor, it's called deemed filing. Deemed filing does not apply. And so you can start on your own record, own work record, and and grow your deceased spouses and then switch. Or if it makes sense, you can just start that deceased spouse, mm-hmm. which we did with, with this lady, and grow your own record and then switch and then maximize. So you're getting the bo- best of both worlds. Because if right. you step back, what we're always trying to do is figure out, okay, does it make sense to maximize the number of payments through retirement from Social Security? Or does it make sense to maximize the amount of each payment? Because that's the question. Early, right. maximizing the number of payments. Later, we're maximizing the amount of the payments. If you're a survivor, you're able to do both. You can maximize the number of payments and still take advantage of the highest possible amount. Wow. Wow. Uh, again, strategy, uh, so, so important. Um, and that's exactly the kind of things and tips that people are, are, are learning. Uh, what is the most common mistake that you see when it comes to social security uh, access strategy? Yeah. Um, I think just not really thinking about, not not having a plan. Right. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest things we talk through is if you're married, especially in the, in the scenario where there's a lower earning spouse, is protecting that lower earning spouse. Because it, let's say you both start, you know, you retire at 65 and now you both start there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, <clears throat> you could have started the lower earning spouse, delayed the primary earner until 70, because when one of you passes away, the lower amount drops off. And even though you started early, the, the lower earning spouse started early, and they're uh-huh. not going to be penalized for starting early once the, the, the primary earner passes away. So I, I, I tell this all the time. And again, I'm speak, I'm speaking in generalities. One of right. the most common situations I see is you have a husband and wife couple. Um, a lot of times the wife stayed home with kids. And so she's going to have a lower social security amount. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and oftentimes the man is older. Oftentimes men die first. So very common scenario of planning is, okay, well, we can start the lower earning wife first let's delay as long as possible with the primary earner, the husband. Mm -hmm. And so that we protect the wife because usually he's going to die first. So that's a very common strategy. Right. Huh. Very interesting. What kind of people are showing up to these classes? Is it all kind of what you would 
assume uh, people in their in, in their 50s, 60s? Are, are there younger people that are coming maybe because they want to help um, advise or help strategize yeah. with their parents or, mm-hmm. you know, grandparents or something like that? What what kind of people are you seeing at, at, at your meetings? Yeah. Uh, you know, 30, 40 year olds out for a, out for a good time. On a <laughs> yeah. Tuesday night. Hey, we're passing a library. <laughs> There's a social right. security seminar. Let's check it out. So it's pretty much what you would, it, it, what you would expect. <laughs> it, we, it's, <laughs> it's generally from 58 to 70, but generally it's usually like, uh, 59, 60 to 65 is who comes. Gotcha. So. Yeah. So pe- people who are in, obviously, the Denver area, yep. um, where can they go to get more information about attending a class, possibly? Yeah, so Social Security Education, um, the site is sseducate.org. Mm-hmm. That's my website. Uh, and so we have a list. I actually need to update it. Thanks for the reminder. Sure. Uh, we have a list <laughs> of, of the next classes that we're, we're doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And you have uh, h- how many per month? Generally, I do one mailing per month. Mm-hmm. Generally, one mailing uh, is two classes, so you have the option of like a Tuesday or a Thursday. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, one per month, may, sometimes two. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And um, so what if someone is outside uh, the Denver area and they maybe can't make a, a local Denver class, don't want to fly in for that yeah. one? Um, but are there tools online that, 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 that they can go to to maybe access and, and get some of these questions answered? That's a that's a, a a good thing to bring up because I think after this <laughs> after this visit here in Atlanta we're going to have an option available. So Absolutely, we're creating a webinar version. If you just want to check out the the presentation I usually give on, it's called Social Security One Hundred and One. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're creating this for that very reason. Excellent, yeah. and you also have a, a, a Facebook group that you're th- yes, that you're building thank as you. well. <laughs> yeah, look at me, man. It's like I'm a marketing person or yeah, something. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> thanks for helping me market myself. <laughs> right, um, that's what we're here for, man. That's right. <laughs> uh, Social Security Education Center. If you type that into Facebook, so created this Facebook group for attendees because a lot of people come to these classes trying to learn about Social Security, but th- they're not going to make the decision for another few years. And mm-hmm. so, you know, they're going to forget a, a fair amount. So we wanted to create a space where you can ask questions. Um, uh, and so that's what the the intent is behind the group. We're also sharing some retirement tips. So Social Security Education Center, um, you can access uh, some, some files in there as well. So that's the Facebook group. Excellent. And That'll be growing. You'll be adding assets. Yeah, I got you on well. in there now. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's growing. I remember, uh, I had a lot of questions. You know, yeah, that absolutely. I actually just got answered uh, today. Oh, I'm going to mark all these questions off. <laughs> That's right. uh, there are some tools out there online that the that the federal government uh, yeah puts out as well. So SSA SSA.gov calculators. Um, the one I described was Quick Calculator, but if you want to get a little more uh, detailed. You just Google SSA or Social Security calculators and click on the the calculator uh, pop up. Uh, it, there's like a list of eight different calculators that can jump into, you know, if it, well, what would it look like if I worked, if I didn't work, or mm-hmm. or I have a pension. That's a that's a big thing people have questions on. If you're a teacher, if you have a pension, uh-huh. it depends on your state, but that impacts how much Social Security you can collect. So you can find out you know, that kind of information there. Awesome. Well, uh, Matt, thank you for the service that you're providing to your, to your community. Um, it is a very important service. I have learned a lot about social security (laughs) today. Uh, I, I hope our viewers uh, have as well. We are going to, as, as Matt said, we're going to be creating a ton of content for him to feature online, uh, to help educate people more about this very important topic. Uh, and we're looking forward to working with you. Very exciting topic. Yeah. It's a super (laughs) exciting topic. Uh, Thanks Samuel. And and absolutely, you know, Travis and Josh are going to do everything they can to, to make it as exciting as possible for us over the next 48 hours. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having me here. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as well. And, uh, we will see you, uh, on the next episode. So stay tuned. Listen to this interview and more on the Alliance Group Podcast.